Okay guys, so today's lesson is going to be on trigonometric functions and those special right triangles, which are the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle and the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. At the end of today's lesson, you should be able to say that you can find the six trigonometric ratios for a given triangle and you can give the exact ratio for a given function. So what are trigonometric functions? Trigonometric functions are a function whose rule is defined by a trigonometric ratio. And the three trigonometric ratios that we should know by now are sine, cone, psi, and tangent. A trigonometric ratio compares the length of two sides of the right triangle. The Greek letter theta is used to represent the measure of an acute angle in a right triangle. Okay, so if we look at this particular triangle here, and let's say we wanted to find the sine of angle theta. The sine is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, if the angle is here, the opposite is going to be the side that is across from, diagonally across from that angle, which is labeled as A, and a hypotenuse is always the side diagonally across from the right angle. So if this is the right angle, C would be the hypotenuse. So sine theta would be equal to A over C. Likewise, cosine theta is going to be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Well, if we go over to angle theta, the adjacent leg is going to be the leg that makes up that angle, which is labeled as B, over the hypotenuse. And again, the hypotenuse is the side that is diagonally across from the right angle. So if this is the right angle, C is going to be the hypotenuse. So cosine theta would be equal to B over C. The tangent is, of theta is going to be equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So again, here is theta, opposite it is A, and adjacent to it is B. So tan theta is going to be equal to A over B. Okay, so the reciprocal functions. So think back to sixth grade math. Um, simply put, to find the reciprocal of a number, you basically flip top and bottom. So the reciprocal of the sine function is going to be cosecant. So if the sine was opposite over hypotenuse, the cosecant, its reciprocal is going to be hypotenuse over the opposite, which would be equal to C over A. The reciprocal function of cosine is the secant function, and that's going to be the reciprocal of adjacent over hypotenuse, which will give you hypotenuse over adjacent, or C over B. The reciprocal function of the tangent function is the cotangent function, which is going to be equal to the reciprocal of the opposite over adjacent, which will give you the adjacent over the opposite, which would be equal to the B over A. Okay, so if we look at question number nine, question number nine asks us to find all six trig ratios for theta shown in a triangle below. And if we look, we have the adjacent leg, it measures 30, and the opposite leg measures 16. Now again, I know that this is the adjacent leg because it helps make up this angle here. And I know that this 16 is the opposite because it's diagonally across from theta, the angle, okay? Well, the side that is missing from the triangle is the hypotenuse. So in order to find hypotenuse of a right triangle, we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. So that's what was done here. So the Pythagorean theorem says that if you take A, square it, and add to it B squared, it's going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared. So doing some substitution, 30 squared is 900, 16 squared is 256. The sum of 900 and 256 is 1156. 
And then if we took the square root of 1156, we get 34. So we know that the hypotenuse of this particular triangle is 34. So now that I have that the hypotenuse is 34, I could start to fill in the information in this particular box. So the first one that I did for you was find sine theta. Sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So here's theta, the opposite is 16. The hypotenuse is 34. And so 16 over 34 can be simplified to eight over 17. What I want you to do at this moment is pause the video and fill in the other five trig functions. Take a moment and check your answers. How did you do? Okay, taking a look at question number 10. Question number 10 says, given the ratio for cosine theta, find the remaining ratios. So if we look, it tells us that the cosine of theta is equal to two over three. And the cosine is equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So this is sort of kind of telling me that the adjacent leg measures two and the hypotenuse measures three. So what I'm going to do is in this space here, I'm going to draw a picture of what I know. Okay, so that's what it would look like. I know that, let's say this is the angle. You could have made this the angle. Uh, you just want to make sure that you label the sides correctly. So if this was angle theta, the adjacent leg would be here. So I marked it with two and the hypotenuse which would be the side that is opposite the right angle would be measured three. So what I see here is that now I have this side over here missing. Okay, and so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to fill in that missing side. By using the Pythagorean theorem, I found out that that missing side of the triangle, the other leg, is equal to the square root of five. So now with that piece of information given to me, I could go ahead and I could fill in these other five remaining trick functions. So what I want you to do is to go ahead and fill in those empty blanks. Take a moment, look at the results. All right, so angles of 30 degrees, 6 degrees, and 45 degrees are often used in trig. You can use your knowledge of the side relationships and special right triangles to find the values of the trigonometric ratios. So if we look at the 45, 45 degree, 90 degree triangle from yesterday's work, we know that this triangle is isosceles. So the two legs of the triangle will both measure X and the hypotenuse of the triangle is going to measure x times radical two. So if we wanna find the sine of 45 degrees, well, we know that if this is the 45 degree angle, the sine is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So it would be equal to x over x rad two. And we're gonna do a little bit of simplifying to get the final result. All right, so to get the final answer, it's a tiny bit tricky here because you have to remember that you cannot have a radical in your denominator. So if we have X over X radical two, what we need to do is multiply both the top and bottom by radical two. So what happens here is if I took radical two and I multiply it by another radical two, that's going to give me radical four and radical four is equivalent to two. So if I took this denominator and multiply it by radical two, I'm gonna be left with two X. And like I said, you have to multiply the top as well by radical two. So we would get X times radical two. And then we could just do some simplifying. We have an X in the numerator here and an X in the denominator here. So then we could go ahead and cancel them both out and we're left with radical two over two. What I want you to do is take a moment to see if you could figure out the cosine 45 degrees and also the tan of 45 degrees. Take a look at the results. 
Okay, so recall when you have a 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree right triangle that the shorter leg is always the leg that is opposite the 30 degree angle. So if this is the 30 degree angle, the shorter leg is here and we're going to mark it with X. And the angle that is, sorry, the other angle is 60 degrees and the side opposite the 60 degree is going to be the longer leg. And that is marked by X times radical three. And a hypotenuse of the triangle is two X. So then if I have this information for this particular right triangle, I could go ahead and find the trig function sine of 30 degrees. And if I have sine of 30 degrees, this is the 30 degree angle. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I would have X over two X. And then I could simplify my result. And because I have X in numerator and denominator, I could go ahead and cancel those out and I'm left with one half. What I want you to do is go ahead and see if you could figure out the other five remaining. Okay, take a look. I think the only tricky one probably was the tan of 30 degrees, and that's only because we end up having that radical in the denominator, and we need to get the radical out of the denominator. In order for that to happen, we have to multiply both the top and bottom by radical three. How'd you do? And hopefully great. So now with this lesson concluding, what I want you to do is go ahead and finish up the remaining problems on the PDF.